Servus. Marhaba. Hola. Hello. I'm inspired that there's so many people working to accomplish the same goal of creating a connected future. By having students lead clubs on campus directly supported by Google developers, that's the best way to reach out to students. It's really inspirational always to hear about members of the community who echo your values and echo your beliefs. I've been listening more than I've been speaking. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because I'm just getting all these ideas. Google, it needs to reach a wider audience and be more relatable as a company. And I think Google is one of the brands that is very good at doing that. Good morning or afternoon out there. Uh, thank you for taking some time to join us here. Uh, we are the Google Cloud event, which is going to be happening during uh, Bed Hacks 2020. We're really excited to be offering you this uh, customized game via Quick Lab and allow us to introduce you to some uh, amazing Googlers as well as fellow students who will be helping you throughout this next hour. Uh, so without further ado, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and kick this off with a brief round of introductions. Uh, my name is Daniel Fiorello. I am the DSC Community Manager here in the U.S. Uh, I support uh, both Alvin and Alexander as DSC leads here. Um, and uh, with that, I will turn it to Alvin. Alvin. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Alvin Bao. I'm the DSC lead at Georgia Tech. I see in the chat that everyone's tuning in for Georgia Tech. I love it. Um, and I'm really excited to be hosting this uh, Kickoff Cloud Hero um, at MedHacks. And so make sure everyone has their water, Google Cloud. So I'm ready to get started. Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Red with Learning Services at Google Cloud. And what I get to do is bring Cloud Hero to students all over the world. So I'm delighted to be here today supporting Georgia Tech and uh, Johns Hopkins with MedHack. So, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Nitin Agarwal. I'm a technical PM with Google Cloud. My team is responsible for building AI ML based solutions for our strategic customers and moving things into customers. And yeah, I'm really excited for this event. Welcome to the Cloud Hero. And we're really excited to introduce you to Google Cloud and all the amazing things and amazing products that we have. Yeah, and enjoy. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm currently a five year bachelor's master's student at Johns Hopkins University. And just like Alvin, I am also the DSC lead for Johns Hopkins. University. Um, yeah, very excited to be here today and very excited to be able to have this opportunity and collaborate on this event with Matt. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Aaron in Austin working on hackathon operations for Google Cloud. So thank you for the show. And once again, hello from Texas. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian. I'm from Austin as well. Um, I'm part of the Google Cloud Hackathon Operations team. And just thank you so much for joining in to our Cloud Hero workshop here at MedHacks. So super excited. All right. So now you've got to meet our fantastic team. From now, uh, for, from now what we'll do is we're actually going to transition to uh, getting y'all into this game and teaching y'all some fantastic things. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and get our presentation deck up, and we will uh, let Alvin and Alex take it from there. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cloud Hero. Uh, I'm really, really excited to uh, start this event. So, quick thing. Um, this is, you know, we already introduced ourselves, but you will be the main facilitators. Um, and I would like to turn it over to Nathan to um, just, you know, sort of introduce everyone to Google Cloud. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Alvin. So definitely today we are going to discuss a lot many stuff about the Google Cloud and primarily on uh, data and ML stuff. We are really excited you to introduce you to our amazing and cool products. And yeah, let's start. Cool. So here's a brief agenda. And this is basically what we're going to be doing today. Uh, basically, we're going to learn more about the game itself and the reasons as to why we're playing this. Um, we'll hear from Nitin about some relevant solutions, 
as well as the possibilities in terms of using them. After that, we'll move on to how to play and actually get getting set up for the first lab. And after we've created a Quick Labs account and entered the campaign code, then we will have you guys actually start playing the games. We will close the workshops with some pro tips and advice that will hopefully assist you in completing the other three labs and have a quick Q&A session at the very end as well. So uh, let's get into cloud computing. So cloud computing can be a confusing term, but at the most basic level, it means that we are getting things done using someone else's computers. Well, obviously the definition you read here is not cloud computing, but Google Cloud Platform allows us to use Google's computing infrastructure to help us run our applications. So what is Google Cloud? A suite of secure storage, innovative ML, powerful compute and integrated data analytics products and services. So how do you build skills to get the most out of these powerful technologies? You have to take a new approach. So equipping your team with the right skills can make or break your journey to the cloud. Traditionally, IT training has largely been centered around one piece of technology, but cloud technology requires a new way of learning. It's no longer just about learning and operating technology. It requires a change in mindset. So Google Cloud Training helps you understand how to use the technology within a job function to build cloud solutions that drive cross-functional success. And we have a role-based learning to help your team thrive in the cloud-first world and help them move from maintainers to strategists, innovators, and disruptors. So what is Cloud Hero? Basically, it is a virtual hands-on training event using the game functionality on Quick Labs, helping technical practitioners gain actual skills through interactive learning in a fun and competitive environment. And Cloud Hero basically brings developers together competing against one another in gamified versions of labs by using their Google Cloud skills. It's actually one of many interactive products from the Higher Education Learning Center at Google Cloud. But overall though, it's just one of the many steps towards the path of gaining some perks as well as certifications along the way. But here is an overview of um, the labs that will be included in this section. Um, today's workshop will be covering uh, BigQuery, Quick Start, uh, Quick Start Command Line. And each labs are actually building blocks and they actually build on top of each other. And there are several ways to keep learning after the event. And here's a URL that you need to know and visit. So this workshop is obviously Cloud Hero and participating in workshops like Cloud Hero alongside other labs uh, with the Learning Center from Google Cloud can really help individuals, technical practitioners, researchers, students, you know, really anyone uh, begin their collection of skill badges and really start learning practical skills that you'll be able to uh, apply for the job search, uh, as well as start your own personal and professional projects. So I'm sure everyone is wondering, what are skill badges? So skill badges are gained by completing a series of hands-on labs, including a final assessment challenge lab to test your skills and earn a Google Cloud skill badge to share with your network. A challenge lab is a scenario-based lab where you have to take the steps to complete the task. There are no instructions and you rely on what you've previously learned. So here is a brief overview of the multiple skill badges you can potentially earn. Uh, this Cloud Hero will be step one of gaining the data, machine learning, and AI badge. Completing the remaining three labs and game will earn you a Cloud Hero skill badge that starts your path. So why are we talking about skill badges? Specifically, why is collecting skill badges so important? Well, these badges will help you practice and train for preparing and taking the Associate Cloud Engineer certification. How cool is that? Earning credentials like these are a great way to show potential employers what you know as well as what you can do. So now we'll hand the mic over to Nitin who will be giving a brief introduction to data and ML. Uh, thanks, Alex and Elvin. So let's start with this section to discuss about data and ML on, on Google Cloud. 
Uh, does anyone know where this photo was taken? Any guesses? You can you can comment out the name. Uh, I think few of you can or can already guess that. Okay, yes, uh, this is one of the Google's uh, many data centers, which houses computing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this houses computing, storage, and networking resources that power Google's on products and services. This specific data center, the picture that you can see is in Council Bluffs, Iowa. In recent years, Google has applied its massive computing scale to something called cloud computing and sharing these resources with developers who want to build and run applications on Google's computing infrastructure. When you use Google Cloud Platform or GCP, you are using a slice of one of these data centers to help power your applications. Essentially, GCP is a suite of developer products that help us build amazing apps using Google's computing power. They use the same technology that powers Google's own products like Search, Inbox, and Google Translate. Here is just a small sample of GCP products. We have dozens and dozens of them. Our products are broken up into categories like compute, date, big data, machine learning, and storage and databases. We would be here for several days if I were to talk about all of our products. So we are just gonna focus on these today. Now that you have a foundational knowledge of Google Cloud, let's know, learn more about machine learning on Google Cloud. Let's consider an interesting problem, or this is an example problem of distinguishing or differentiating between puppies and muffins, very classic problem. One way to go about this is to set up a bunch of rules. Rules may be like, hey, any photo with eyes or ears is a puppy, while any photo with something in a wrapper is a muffin. But sometimes it's not easy. Now, the rule of looking for eyes doesn't work because we have blueberry muffins, and that looks very, very similar to puppies. This shows that, that using hard-coded rules only goes so far in helping us classify images. You cannot generalize it. We are going to try a different approach rather than just using hard-coded to solve problems. Here is another example. We have this sentence, the brown quick fox jumps over the lazy dog. Does anyone know what's special about this sentence? Any thoughts, any ideas? This is a very classic sentence actually. Cool, yes. This sentence is special because it has every single letter of the alphabet in it. Now, does anyone notice anything wrong with this sentence? Do you find anything different in this sentence? Yes, it should be the quick brown fox instead of the brown quick fox. Anyone know why the original version was incorrect? Why this brown quick fox jumps over the lazy dog is incorrect? Mm, grammar, yeah, that can be an interesting thing, yes. Anything else? Order of ob adjectives, yes. Cool, that's interesting. The brown needs to be the right next to the word it's modifying. That makes sense, yes. Cool, let's jump into that, okay? Why the original version was incorrect. So the reason why it's the quick brown fox is because we have syntax rules for adjective order in English. With multiple adjectives, they need to be in order like quantity, quality, size, age, shape, color, proper adjective, and purpose or qualifier. How many of you know these rules? So actually, all of you know these kind of rules implicitly even if we can't explain them. So the question is, how did you learn these rules? 
The answer is that you learn these through experience, observing how sentences are structured by hearing people talk and reading through different books. Over time, you gain a lot of experience and can internalize many of these rules without even knowing them explicitly. So in a way, we can say that machine learning, it's a learning from rules as well as learning from experiences. Just like that, over a period of a time, you will be building a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom, and that will be in conjunction with rules, will create some output that you can say that, yes, this is a human learning or a machine learning. Here is a very nice diagram showing how machine learning differs from classical programming. With classical programming, you take data and rules as input and output answers. So for an example, if you will say i is less than 5, then y is equals to 1, else 0. That's like you have a rule of 0 and a 1, you have data, and you're predicting the answers. While with machine learning, you actually start with data and answers. This is your training material and use it to generate rules that you can use to make predictions for future pieces of test data. So in machine learning, you will be sending i is equals to one, then y is equals to zero. i is equals to two, then y is equals to zero. i is equals to five, and then y equals to one. And a machine learning model or a system will learn those rules that yes, when it is less than five, it's zero, else one. Basically, you can just use past data to learn patterns that will develop and that will help you evaluate new data. The next question is, what is machine learning? One definition from the IEEE organization says that the machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that improve automatically through experience. A simpler definition by Yu Feng Guo, one of my colleagues, a developer advocate at Google, is that machine learning is using data to answer questions. With machine learning, we can take training data, use it to create predictive model, and then use that model to predict future results. As our model takes in more data over time, it can generate more accurate predictions. In a brief sense, you can say that ML teaches a computer to make repeated decisions using standard algorithms with a lot of data. You have a lot of data, the more the data will be, merrier it will be. After that, you will be having a one system or algorithm that will be learning from that data to create some rules. And on top of it, you will be able to generate some insights as a prediction. So here it will be data instead of rules. And finally, you will be capable enough to make a business decisions or a technical decision based on the rules and as well as on the data. So machine learning is used in almost all of the Google products. One example of machine learning at Google is Google Photos. Does anyone here use the Google Photos app? I usually use Google Photos a lot. One of my favorite feature of Google Photos is a keyword search. With Google Photos, you can search your photos using keyword like dog or Hawaii. Google Photos uses computer vision technology to label different photos based on what Google's machine learning model thinks is going on in each photo. After training on billions of images, Google Photos predictive model allow you to search for images using keywords without having to manually label them at all. So you can search for a keyword like a dog or a Hawaii or a landscape or anything, and it will automatically filter all those photos for you without manually labeling them. You are not going to label each and every photos by yourself. Does anyone know what this is? Google Home is like another example of Google machine learning capabilities. When you ask your Google Home to turn on the lights or play music or any other action, Google Assistant uses machine learning for speech to text transcription. So add as it knows what to do for you. And after that, it sends that particular action to the trigger element so that it will be to take an appropriate action based on your command. This is like a very classic case of machine learning where you are using a multiple blocks to solve a real problem for humans. Another example for machine learning at Google is the Google Translate app. This is one of my favorite app. I used to travel a lot before COVID. Has anyone here used this app before?
With this app, you can get an instant in-app translation of street signs captured by your camera. It will actually transpose the translated text directly on your screen. Accurate translation is a pretty challenging problem, but with machine learning, Google can do this really well. This is like a very brief diagrammatic experimentation, or you can say a visualization of the data. We got this data from Evenscop. You can see we have more than 23 million developers or software developers across the world. We have more than 100 million business users who are consuming the outputs of these technical systems. But if we consider Kaggle or Cloud Analytics or some other uh, open source platforms, we do not have more than two or three million machine learning experts. And when we talk about like a deep learning researchers or DL researchers, we have like a very handful of them, hardly 10,000 or 20,000. So you can see that, yes, actually very, very limited people are currently using it and not everybody can build a custom machine learning model. So our goal is to empower more users to help enterprise level AI in production and as well as democratizing the machine learning so that everybody and anybody can use it irrespective of technical and a business audience. So it means to solve these challenges, our vision at Google Cloud is to make AI easy, fast, and useful for all developers. We believe AI is a fundamental cloud technology that will eventually benefit all enterprises. The capability of AI isn't a question. It is the point where AI research has shown as that it can and does power real applications. However, the biggest barrier to adoption is getting it into the hands of customers. This is why we are building solutions that can reach the market like developers, data scientists, researchers, and more, and make it easy for them to adopt and deploy it regardless of AI expertise. Now let's watch a video that showcases how these solutions can be used. This is a video that's showing how a group of students in LA use machine learning to solve a real life societal problem.
Cool, interesting. This is a really interesting use case. Now, uh, after this, Alex and Elvin, over to you for the next slides and as well as to describe how to play this game. Yeah, so, um, well, let's get started. Uh, first of all, we are going to use an incognito window. Um, why? Because that way, when we start using the assigned credentials, you'll find that everything goes more smoothly. Um, by the way, Chrome browser works best for Quick Labs, uh, Firefox Nest, Next, although you can use it in any browser. If you already have an account, please sign into Quick Labs uh, or just simply join. Um, this is basically our hands-on lab environment where we will actually be uh, able to complete these exercises in the actual Google Cloud Platform ecosystem. So um, here's how you can change the language you take the labs in. So if you select your profile in the top right and you go to my account, in the left menu panel, select profile info and then scroll down and click the language field and select your preferred language. Uh, finish by click, clicking update user uh, at the bottom. Um, also optional, you can change your player name. Um, a note, please uh, use your actual name uh, because if you like win a prize, uh, we want to be able to know who actually won. So even though we all love uh, using funny names for Kahoot or games like that, uh, please use your like real name. Um, but stay on the profile info page, uh, click the player name text field and enter your name. Um, and you finish that by clicking update user. So now you have the game link right there. Feel free to copy the game link into your incognito window and the campaign code, access code that we'll be using right there to a MetHax. Please insert this access code onto the pop-up window. And once you've entered this, you will be granted access to all four labs and the game. Yeah. If you uh, miss this, I think um, someone is working on dropping it in the YouTube live chat. So um, yeah, that will be in there for you. So after you've been copying and pasting the access codes and logging in, this should be the screen that you're seeing on the uh, on the incognito window. Um, hold on, I think we're experiencing some issues with the lab code. Uh, I think um, someone will. I think Danny will get to work on dropping the correct code in the chat. Um, yeah, apologies for the confusion, everyone. Please bear with us for a second. We're trying to work on this. Um, it'll be dropped in the chat shortly. I think Brian dropped it in the chat um, and that should be the correct code.
let us know. Okay, I see in the chat that it says um, it's working. Okay, that's good. Thank you guys for bearing with us. Um, Um, yeah, if you guys could also drop the uh, the game link as well. I think someone was asking for that in the chat. Um, is anyone having issues still? Works now. Okay. Um, we're going to give you guys two or three minutes and then uh, we'll move on. Uh, but it should look like what you see on your screen. The link. Brian, if we could go back to the slide, maybe with the um, with the game, like the game link. Yeah. Yeah, the code is wrong on the slide. Please trust the uh, comment code, the one that was pinned in the chat. But okay, got in. We'll be explaining how to play in a couple of minutes. Just we want to make sure that everyone um, is in correctly. Um, you know, that's, that's the most important part is that we're, everyone's in the lab. Thank you guys again. Need some more time. Maybe, uh, we'll give it one more minute and then Okay, uh, Leslie said she would take care of it, so we're going to move on. All right. So again, this is what you should see. Uh, and yeah. Um, so what game are we gonna play? Uh, basically, this is data ML and with BigQuery and it has four labs. So each time you're in a lab, right, you're going to be using an anonymous set of credentials. So make sure not to confuse the student logins or the project IDs. That's very, very important. If you do confuse them, then you might not be able to complete the exercises in subsequent labs. So keep everything straight for each lab. This is the reason why we're using an incognito window. Um, and very important, uh, you will start each lab and get new logins and you must end each lab before going on to the next one. Okay, so we're about to begin. So I hope that everyone is ready. Yeah, 
how is how is everyone doing? Is it is everyone good? All right. So um, last minute pro tip, make sure the project ID is the correct one that matches the lab that you're currently working on. Um, and yeah, that's the alphanumeric label. You need to copy into the verification field to validate your project. Um, but yeah, we should definitely uh, try to get started. Um, and so I will explain how the game works So, yeah, so this is how timing and scoring will work. Uh, we're here to learn, but if you want a friendly competition, then be fast and accurate as you do the labs. Um, you can redo the lab up to five times and the fastest score will be used, but make sure you read all the instructions first and then hit start lab. I will, I will do a live demo, um, please bear with me, but uh, if you guys want to follow along with me or continue at your own pace, you can. Should be getting screen share up in a bit. Yeah, so can everyone see my screen? Okay. So I need to get the game link, so bear with me. I will be doing this along with you guys, So, but I will be slow and make sure not to win. <laughs> but so I already have a Quick Labs account, so I will be using my email. All right, so this is what it should look like for you guys. And basically I want to join this game and the access code. Is. All right, so now I'm in. Oh my God, I see you guys are already going, going hard. Um, but so here's the lab page. Uh, you can see the scores are on the side, but this is a self-paced lab, obviously. And so what's really important is we read like the setup requirements first. Um, obviously we need access to a standard browser and you know we have time to complete the lab. Um, yes, again, own personal Google Cloud, don't use it for the lab, um, but we will click on start lab to start it up. So what we want to do is open the Google console. This is really important right here, the username and the password. So once we open up the Google console, it prompts us for a sign in. Uh, what we want to do is copy the username. Don't use your personal, please. We don't want you paying for stuff. And then we want to copy the password. And we accept. And we confirm. So now it, we should be in Google Cloud Platform, GCP. 
you can see it loads up. Nice. Um, and we want to go back down and we want to activate Cloud Shell. This is really important right here. It's what we will be doing. Oh, agree to terms of service, obviously. But we want to activate the Cloud Shell. This is what we'll be doing most of the lab in. All right, as you can see, we're now in the Cloud Shell. And so what you want to do is we want to follow these instructions. So we can check out the active account name with this command. So obviously, gcloud auth list. And so we see it's like a student account right here, right? And then if we want to look at the, the project, we can just copy this right here. And we see we have a Quick Labs project. OK, moving on. That's, that's gcloud uh, documentation. So if you guys want to look at that. Uh, feel free to. So what we're going to do is, you know, BigQuery has a lot of sample tables uh, that we can run queries against. And so this lab will be using the Shakespeare table. Um, so to examine the schema, uh, we'll use this command right here. We're going to use BQ show BigQuery. And as you can see, this does have a lot of data in it. But yeah, so as in the command, you see we're doing BQ to uh, invoke BigQuery command line tool, and then show is what we want to display. And then we're listing the name of the project in BigQuery that we want to see. Obviously, it should look something like this. And as you can see here, it seems like everything is uh, going correctly. Um, if you want help uh, with some BigQuery commands, we can run this command right here. See, and this should bring up a list of all the query um, flags. And so that's that's some really good documentation right there. So what we want to do is because we want to find out uh, you know, how many words or occurrences of word there are, uh, we can run this command, bq query and a SQL statement, which is uh, what the database schema is in. Uh, we'll copy this right here, and we'll find the amount of occurrences in uh, of raisin in Shakespeare's work. So as you can see, oh, well, you know, praising, capital praising, raising, and raisins one, pretty good. Um, obviously, the note is uh, use legacy SQL as false and make standard SQL the default query syntax. Um, so as you can see, this is like a very, this is like the output it gives you. So the word raisin doesn't actually appear. Uh, but then, so a really important thing to do is check my progress, right? That is going to be really, really important. See, and because I completed the task, um, I was able to check it off. Right. So moving on, um, if you search for a word that isn't in Shakespeare's works, uh, no results are returned. So we're going to look for huzzah. So just copy that statement and then looking for huzzah. And well, nothing's returned. And obviously, we're going to want to check my progress. See, and that marks it as complete. So now we want to create a new table. Um, so every table is stored inside a data set, and a data set is a group of resources such as tables and views. So we can use the bqls command. Obviously, nothing's there because you know we don't have any data sets. But what we can do is we can use the bigquery public data and display a bunch of data sets. Yeah, like look at all these. Looking really good. See, oh, even have COVID Johns Hopkins. 
Um, but then we want to make a new data set. So obviously this is important, data set name, uh, but we want to do this and we want to make a baby, baby names. So see, successfully created. And then we're gonna check my progress. Looking good, looking good. All right, and now we're gonna run this BigQuery LS. See, as you can see, our baby names appear. All right, we want to upload a data set. So before you build the table, obviously we need some data, <laughs> but um, we're going to be using this um, social security administration uh, file with popular baby names. So we're gonna take this zip file and add it to the data set. Oh yeah, everyone, um, you have five tries for each lab, so um, don't be discouraged and yeah. So now we're going into list the file, ls, you see readme names.zip and the readme. So we're going to now unzip this file. Wow, a lot, lot of names. So we're gonna list the files again. See, look at all these names. It's now what we have in the data set. So BigQuery load command creates or updates the table and loads data in a single set. Um, we'll load into a new table called names 2010. So. Sample output, current status, done. Cool. Let's see if we loaded the data into a new table. All good. So now we're gonna run BigQuery LS and baby names, and then we're gonna confirm that it appears in the data set. And look at that, names 2010, and it's a table. Awesome. So now we can show the schema. Total rows, a lot of rows. So you see it matches the output here. So it looks like we're all good. Um, now we're going to run some queries. So we're gonna run the following command to return the top five most popular girl names. So it looks like Isabella, Sophia, Emma, Olivia, and Ava are the top five is most popular in 2010. Um, and let's run the following command to see the top five most unusual boy names. So the most, oh, okay, only five of each, wow. Ah, uh, the minimum count is five because source data emits names with fewer than five occurrences. That makes a lot of sense. So now we're gonna check the progress again. So all good to go. So now we need to test our understanding. We can access BigQuery using web UI, command line tool. And BigQuery REST API. And then which command line tool is used to interact with BigQuery service? Obviously the one we've been using this entire time, BQ. And so make sure this is really important. We wanna clean up, we wanna get rid of that baby names data. We wanna hit yes, enter. Then we wanna check if we removed it properly. See yes. And congratulations, now we can use the command line to, with BigQuery to manipulate data. And so obviously this is part of all of these quick labs. Um, 
and obviously you're part of the Cloud Hero. Really important, uh, we want to hit end lab. And, but, you know, next steps, obviously, um, you know, it gives you a taste of, you know, the features available with Google Cloud. And obviously, it will set you up for a path for certification. But really important, end lab. Let's see, very. All right, everyone. Um, now I will stop sharing my screen. Um, and I think we'll wrap up and continue on with our, uh, you know, finish up our pre presentation for y'all today. Yeah. Howdy. Thank you so much for that amazing walkthrough. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to finish out this event with a couple of pro tips, <clears throat> as well as how to be able to connect back with these amazing resources that, that we have put in front of you. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our presentation up if it's available. All right. Uh, so first of all, want to give you all uh, a quick round of applause. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for bearing with us as we went through a couple of logistical slash uh, technical issues. Um, good news is in our chat windows uh, and when you review this particular uh, YouTube video, you will have all of the links necessary to gain access back to this specific Cloud Hero. Um, if you do have any issues uh, from there, you know, uh, just let us know and we'd be happy to help. But uh, before we let you go, I want to just remind you of a couple things. You can track uh, your score and progress your score with up to five different attempts of these labs. So if you're not satisfied, go back, try it again, uh, and, and make sure to take uh, a little bit more, I don't want to say time, but pay a little bit more attention to what you're doing. As remember, speed and accuracy do count towards your final score. Um, and check out where you rank uh, on our leaderboard. Uh, if you think you are potentially going to be one of our, our top 10, you know, make sure to check it every now and again. Make sure you're not getting kicked out of that top spot. If you are, maybe give it another go uh, and try to get uh, a little bit higher of a score than you previously did. So reminder, um, you can quickly jump to products and services uh, via the, the, cl the Cloud Shell uh, by clicking the, the button highlighted there. Um, we have tons of different things on uh, Quick Labs for you to use. Uh, so yes, um, make sure to take advantage of all of these resources as well as the products built in here. Uh, finally, what I want to do here quickly, uh, if I could just, uh, we'll stop sharing our screen. Uh, I just want to thank you all uh, for taking the time to join with us here. Uh, I would like to bring uh, Alvin back on stage to talk briefly just about uh, his social media as well as some future events that he may have upcoming that I believe y'all would have uh, some interest in joining. So Alvin, if you would like to come on stage and uh, quickly plug some of your future events, we would love to have you. Yeah, cool. So um, for my Georgia Tech people, uh, next week, obviously, we're doing the Google intern panel. So make sure uh, following us on Instagram uh, at dsc.gt. Um, maybe if someone wants to plug that in the comments, uh, that'd be really cool. Uh, and um, I think we're potentially holding the um, holding another event at a hackathon next week. And so that will be like a cloud study jam. So it'll be very laid back, GCP essentials. Uh, really excited for that as well. Um, and uh, I'm really happy that all of, I saw so much support from Georgia Tech and I really, really love uh, that all of you came out today. It was, I think this was a great event. And I think, oh yeah, I think Brian is helping me present. Yeah, so if you wanna check us out at dsc.gt, uh, it's the Instagram, please, please uh, follow us. And that's how you'll stay up to date with a lot of uh, our events. You can also sign up for a mailing list on our website, dscgt.club. 
and the Johns Hopkins socials, uh, jhudsc.com. Uh, so how to get involved is, you know, just if you don't go to Georgia Tech, um, you know, if you go to a university, reach out and see if they have a DSC there. Uh, lots of really exciting stuff, especially, you know, coming in North America. We have a great team. Uh, Madusha and Danny are really, really awesome. And uh, I want to make sure that you guys uh, have opportunity to access all these great resources. But thank you guys so much for making this a great event. Yes, I just want to, again, thank you all, each and every one of you for joining. A uh, couple things to finish this off. Uh, so I know there are some questions about how long the game is going to be active. Uh, it's going to be active from eight days to this point. So uh, over this next week, take your time to make sure and go back, complete these labs, talk to your peers, right? You know, uh, if, if they have questions, try to help them through it as well. Come back to this video, review it follow along with Alvin as he does this, this live code along to help you out. And at the end of the day, remember, have fun utilizing these amazing resources and check back into DSC events in the future. Uh, as we plugged on our social uh, page just a second ago, there are some fantastic events very similar to Cloud Hero that we believe y'all will all be able to learn from and be able to take uh, some new skills from theory to practical application. But with that, uh, if we could get all of our presenters back on screen to just wave and, and say goodbye and thank you all so much for joining. Uh, we uh, have been very fortunate enough and, and luckily, lucky to have gotten this opportunity to, to join your event virtually. So thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, hope you all have a great rest of your med hacks and we will see you online in the Cloud Hero game. Bye, y'all. Bye.